It's a virus that many people still don't understand. When COVID-19 was first discovered, doctors believed it was predominantly a respiratory disease like pneumonia. Quite unusually and quite concerningly, even though we've treated this as a respiratory virus, it's be becoming very clear that it's much more than that. The longer we live with the virus, the more we learn about long-term effects. This is a virus that can infect multiple organs and mul multiple systems in the body. So we're certainly seeing people who have lingering symptoms um, after they've got rid of the acute infection. And so um, we're only going to find out more about this as time goes on. UK-based Aussie opera singer Helena Dix was perfectly healthy when all of a sudden COVID hit and hit hard. It was a case of, you know, all the things that they tell you to look for. So soaring high temperature, couldn't get out of bed, dry cough, lost my sense of taste. And one morning I just felt slightly odd. I felt slightly odd with my lungs and my breath. And one minute I was boiling a cup of tea and the next minute I literally could not breathe. And it was absolutely terrifying. Usually the lungs are the first to be hit. When the virus enters the cells of the airways, it can cause clots in the small blood vessels. The damaged cells turn into scar tissue. That could lead to even more clotting and permanent damage. It's a very delicate structure. And if there is scarring, that structure can be interfered with. It makes the lungs stiff and therefore people feel breathless. And secondly, the scarring, when it's severe, can interfere with the gas exchange. And so people's level of oxygen and to some extent carbon dioxide can also be affected. As a result of corona is that I had formed a giant blood clot on my lungs and I couldn't breathe. And when I came into hospital, the doctor said to me that they'd never seen such a large clot on a set of lungs before. And I, I felt oddly proud of the fact that, that all the resources that I've trained my entire life, you know, to be able to go, ah, and I couldn't even take a breath. I was just focusing on trying my best to, to do everything that I knew best to keep myself alive. For patients on a ventilator, the lung's muscles become weak. So when they're taken off, they basically need to learn how to breathe again. I was in hospital for 12 days and um, what they tried to do was to slowly wean me off, off the air supply. It was a very slow process. And the lungs aren't the only organ to potentially suffer long-term damage from COVID-19. The heart's also at serious risk. COVID-19 unleashes a devastating blood clotting disorder. It's probably one of the most severe clotting abnormalities we've ever seen, affecting all major organs within the body and potentially can cause long-term damage. Clotting in the heart can cause damage to the heart muscle and this can lead to a heart attack or in fact can have heart failure. Then there's the impact on the brain. In the brain it can cause a stroke and unfortunately what we've seen is strokes occurring in younger people and these are potentially very severe strokes. And a problem in the brain is that the brain does not regenerate so this leads to long-term disability. And the central nervous system. People are starting to talk about um, COVID-19 as a, a nose to toes disease. And that reflects the fact that people are experiencing a loss of smell um, right the way through to experiencing um, something akin to frostbite in their toes. The number of young people in ICU is on the rise. At present at Royal Melbourne in our intensive care, we, we have a number of relatively young people who were previously well, who've got very severe COVID and, and will likely have some degree of scarring uh, once the COVID resolves. For many, many people, uh, this represents a, a disability that they carry uh, with their breathing or with their general health for some time to come. We've got a, a virus that can infect multiple organs of the body um, and as soon as you have that happening that's a pretty serious thing so um, we certainly shouldn't be underestimating the seriousness of this infection. You can take it from someone who almost lost everything. It's, it's not a case of sitting in bed and not feeling great for a few days. 
this virus hits people in such different ways and this carefree attitude that it won't affect you or it won't affect your loved ones is so frustrating from someone who's been through absolute hell and back take it from me i nearly lost my life and it could be you or it could be your family it could be the coronavirus itself or it could be an after effect that it has on your body just please take care of yourselves and of each other that is such a great message i'm so glad that we did that story and i honestly i don't think we hear about this stuff enough um, my cousin who lives in the UK, she got coronavirus, she's 29 yeah. and she got it a few months ago and to this day she has difficulty breathing. She still can't taste and smell properly. Wow. You know, I hate to use the term unprecedented because it's used so often, you know, in this instance, but this is unprecedented. Mm. We don't know what the long-term effects of this are. Mm. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a nasty bit of gear, this virus, yeah. because... As we're learning, it, it's not a, a virus of the lungs. It's a, it's a virus that affects your, your blood vessels. Mm. And where do we have blood vessels? Everywhere. Everywhere, Everywhere, apart from pretty much our toenails. So every part of your body can be affected by the effects of that inflammation. Yeah, I just don't think people know that enough. Mm. That mm. message isn't Jan, fact, don't you think it, it is confusing because we also have people that are completely asymptomatic? So mm. I yeah. understand that this is a horrible story of a young woman nearly losing her life, but then for, for each story like that, we also hear people that go, you know what, I didn't even know I had it. Mm. Yeah. And so for the general public... It, it is confusing just because the effects are so varied. But I think she made a really great point there in the end where we just don't know, yeah. so take care. Yeah. You can't predict it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm.